Hi Ram students, let's begin with our class A political science session today. Children, today we are going to begin with a revision of chapter number 5 of political science that is judiciary. We have already learned, we have already completed with the chapter but today we are doing the revision of this. So today we are doing the first part of the revision video here. Now before starting with the topics, let's go through the content. We will see the introduction, then you will learn what is the role of the judiciary, what is an independent judiciary, then what is the structure of courts in India, what are the different branches of the legal system, does everyone have access to the courts. So these are all the topics that we are going to cover in this chapter. Now let's begin with the introduction. Now. You all have learned about the rule of law, right? What does it mean actually? The law, that means the laws apply equally to all persons and that a certain set of fixed procedures need to be followed when a law is violated, right? So to enforce the law, rule of law, we need to have something, right? We need to have the judicial system. So what is that judiciary actually? Judiciary, it is an organization of government that settle the disputes through the interpretation of law. It is an independent organization okay, of the government. So to enforce the rule of law, the rule of law states that all laws apply equally to all persons, correct? So to enforce that, we need to have a judicial system that consists of the mechanism of the courts that a citizen can approach when a law is violated okay understood why we need to have the judiciary okay then as an organ of the government the judiciary plays a very crucial role in the functioning of the india's democracy how it is it can play this role only because it is independent then now we are going to learn here about the independent judiciary also after that now let's move to the role of the judiciary. What is the role of the judiciary here? See, court takes decisions on a large number of issues, correct? We have seen any crime that happens, the court has the work of the judiciary decides like what type of decisions the court takes, okay? Now we will see that the work of the judiciary can be divided into the following. What is that? See, first is the dispute resolution. The main work of the judiciary is the dispute resolution. See, judicial system that provides a mechanism for resolving disputes. Among whom? Among between citizens, within citizens and the government, between two state governments, between the center and state government. Then what is the next year? judicial review now what does it mean judicial review see uh, judiciary has the power as a final interpreter of the constitution the judiciary has the power to strike down particular laws if it believes particular laws from where passed by the parliament okay if judiciary believes that these are a violation of the basic structure of the constitution so I'll repeat again children, try to understand judicial review means the laws that has been stated in the judiciary can be reviewed like uh, the judiciary has the power to strike down particular laws that is passed by the parliament if it believes that these are violating the basic structure of the constitution. That is the meaning of the judicial review. Now the next function, the next important work of the judiciary is upholding the law and enforcing fundamental rights. Now your, what does it state here? See every citizen of India can approach the Supreme Court or the High Court if they believe that their fundamental rights have been violated. Correct? This is what we have seen the story also in our previous standard. 
so it is like the right of each and every citizen of the country of india they can approach to the supreme court or the high court if they believe their fundamental rights have been violated so now i hope you understood the work of the judiciary right what was that the dispute resolution then the judicial review then upholding the law and enforcing fundamental rights now moving to the next topic before coming to that i'll just give you some information related to the supreme court supreme court you all have learned this it was established on 26th of january 1950 the day india became a republic right now let's move to the next topic what is an independent judiciary see the main thing is independent judiciary means the judiciary has to work without the interference with the, that means the separation the separate power should be given to the judiciary that is the independent judiciary see independent word you all understand judiciary also you understand so just combine these two words together and understand the meaning so the main aspect of this independence is the separation of powers what does it mean here see the key feature of the constitution it means that the other branches of the government that is the legislature and the executive they cannot interfere in the work of the judiciary so the main meaning of the independent judiciary means the separation of powers right so the other branches should not interfere in the work of the judiciary now all judges in the high court see even the courts are not under the government and they do not act on their behalf then uh, it is like all the judges in the high court as well as the supreme court are appointed with very little interference from these other branches of court okay and even once appointed to this office it is also very difficult to remove a judge so it allows the courts now it is the independence of the judiciary that allows the court to play a central role in ensuring that there is no misuse of power by the legislature and the executive now it also plays a very crucial role in protecting the fundamental rights of citizens how because anyone can it is it has been told as per the rule of law also right anyone can approach to the court whether the high court or the supreme court if they feel if they believe that their rights have been violated so that is the meaning of the independent judiciary now moving to the next topic that is what is the structure of courts in india now let's move to the next topic that is what is the structure of courts in india see there are three different levels of courts in our country there are several courts at the lower level while there is only one at the apex level that is at the top level now children through this pyramid you can understand the three levels has been shown to you the lower court the high court and the supreme court now there are several courts at the lower le level while there is only one at the apex level right the courts that most people interact with are called as the subordinate or the district court see commonly the people will directly not approach to, uh, if you uh, practically if you talk anything happens you will not directly go to the supreme court or the high court right so the court that most people interact or the most people will approach that is the subordinate court or the district courts right and they are usually at the district or the tehsil level or in towns and they may hear many kinds of cases here so each state is divided into districts and that are presided over by a district judge so children like at the lower level we can have, we have to understand that there is subordinate or the district court okay the subordinate or the district court that is at the 
these are usually at the district or tehsil level or in or in towns okay so this is the town level also so they may hear many kinds of the issues that the people are facing in that particular district in that particular town okay then after that the each state is divided into districts that are presided over by a district judge okay then each state has a high court also which is the highest court of that particular state see we saw the highest level is the supreme court that is for all over the country okay but state wise if we'll talk with the high court is at the highest level for each and every state so each state has a high court which is the highest court of that particular state and the top is the supreme court that is located in new delhi and is presided over by the chief justice of india so the decisions made by the supreme court are binding on all the other courts in india so at the district level we have the lower level court okay then the second level is the high court and at the top level is the supreme court okay so this is the structure this is the pyramid okay now let's move to the next important topic about the high courts see high courts these were for high courts were first established in the three presidency cities of calcutta bombay and madras that is in the year 1862 then the high court of delhi came up in the year 1966 then currently there are 25 high courts while many states they have their own high courts okay but if we'll talk about the state punjab and haryana they share a common high court at chandigarh okay and we have four north eastern states of assam nagaland mizoram and arunachal pradesh that have a common high court at guwahati even andhra pradesh that is amravati and telangana is uh, we have at hyderabad these have the separate high courts that is that started from the 1st of january 2019 so some high courts have benches in other parts of the state for greater accessibility so this is what you have learnt about the high courts of a country then in india we know see there are different levels of courts that are connected to each other right so in india also we have an integrated judicial system that means that means like the decisions made by the higher courts are binding on the lower courts also so you try to understand the meaning of that integrated judicial system what is that integrated that means the decisions made by the higher courts even the lower courts are also binded with that they are bonded with that decisions okay so this is like the integration so the another way to understand this integration is through the appellate system that exists in india now what is that a person can appeal to a higher court if they believe that the judgment passed by the lower court is not just see if i am not satisfied with the decision me given by the lower court to me for any of the crime so i have that authority as a citizen of india i can appeal the same case again in the higher court also when i feel i am not satisfied with the decision of the lower court okay so here any other way say like this means a person has the right to appeal okay in the other court now you can understand this appellate system by one of the example here you have already learnt about this example that is between the state that is delhi administration versus lakshman kumar and others that uh, that was in the year 1985 in that the from the lower courts to the supreme court so lakshman kumar he married to a 20 year old girl and on 2nd december suda died in hospital due to burns okay so her family filed a case in court like uh, the they stated that on the night of the december one they had heard suda screaming and had forced their way into lakshman's flat so there they saw suda standing with a sari in flames they extinguished the fire by wrapping suda in a gunny bag and a blanket so after that the 
Sudha told them that her mother-in-law Shakuntala had poured kerosene oil on her and that her husband Lakshman had lit her in the fire. So during the trial, the members of the Sudha's family and the neighbors stated that the Sudha has been subjected to torture by her in-laws and they were demanding more cash, a scooter and a fridge on the birth of the first child. So this was the case, Lakshman and his, as a part of the defense, Lakshman and his mother, they stated that uh, they wanted to save themselves. This. So they stated that the Sudha Sari had accidentally caught fire while she was doing some work in the kitchen. So on the basis of this and other evidences, a trial court, they convicted Lakshman, but his mother Shakuntala and uh, his brother-in-law Subhash Chandra, they all sentenced they and sentenced all three of them to death. But whereas what they did, the three accused, they went to the high court because they, they were not satisfied with the uh, decision of the trial court. So they went, they went to the high court to appeal against this verdict. Okay. So the high court, after hearing the arguments of all the lawyers, decided that Sudha had died due to an accidental fire caused by the kerosene stove. There, Lakshman, Shakuntala and Subhash Chandra, they were acquitted. But then, it, this is what, uh, like, I'm trying to explain you the meaning of the appellate system. Like, if a person is not satisfied with the decision of the lower courts, they can approach to the high court, okay? So this is what we have seen, like, the high court judgment deeply disturbed the, uh, see in the Supreme Court they heard this appeal against the acquittal of the Lakshman and the two members of his family and reached a final decision that was different from that of the high court. Again they approached to the Supreme Court also after high court. First the lower court, then the high court, then the Supreme Court. So this is what the appellate system, a person can approach to the court of law if they are not happy they are. Uh, with the decision of the lower courts okay so supreme court finally decides the decision given by the supreme court is the final so children here today we have completed the important topics of this chapter in the revision in the first part of our revision video right we saw the meaning of the judiciary then we saw what is the role of the judiciary then we learnt about the independent judiciary then you saw about the structure of courts in India. Now children, the remaining topics we will be continuing in the next revision video. Till then, go through your textbook, go through the main presentation also, go through this presentation also. So read the chapter very well, mark the important points as usual, I always tell you. Read it again and again so that you will be able to understand the concept of that things and you will be able to write the answer by your own. So children take very good care of your health. See you in the next session with the next revision video.